definition, what an operatic sailor does. Solution, hits the high C. And our solution to fun with a pun on television is definition. And now, here's the host of our show, Jim Perry. Welcome to the show. Hello there. Welcome to Definition. We welcome back our captains this week, Joe Flaherty and Sean Evans. Yay! Hello there. On the Second City Show, you all do so many different things. I mean, you do that. At the, uh, you were mentioning yesterday the Guy Caballero that uh, that showed us. And the one I love, the Count Floyd. I, I adore <laughs> Count Floyd. I mean, Count Floyd is every local performer who, who has to double, right? He's got right, to do right. so many different things. And, uh, how, how do you decide who does what on the show? I think we just, we, if we have an idea for a character, if we want to do something like that, like Count Floyd, because I, I, I used to watch these late night uh, horror things, you know, and all the local stations all had their, you know, scary Billy or, yeah. you know, frightening yeah. Willie or whoever, and they'd come out, and they always had the really, really not very scary films, you know, and I just wanted to do something like that, so I said, let's do it. And he's, all he is is just a real bad Bella Lugosi. I mean, he <laughs> paints on that uh, Widow's Peak, and uh, he just gets, you know, upset all the time because of uh, the films they get, which aren't scary. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, plus he howls. He's not even, you know, like a vampire howling. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> called me on that once. They said, vampires don't howl, werewolves howl. You know, I thought, oh, yeah, they why not just howl anyway? <laughs> <laughs> It's different, yeah. Well, do, you guys, do you guys ever fight about it, or who's going to, about doing one, and, and, and everybody says, no, I don't want you to do it, or do you, you do it? No, well, uh, you know, there are times, there are situations, like we have running characters, like a John, John Candy, for instance. Uh, this was a specific show. He did a scene where he was supposed to go out on the street and interview some people, and nobody would be there. Right. And yeah. um, he went out, and uh, they scheduled it for 3 in the morning, in Edmonton in December, and and John and we all said, don't do it, John. It's just a little scene. It's not gonna, you know, it's not that important to the show. He said, no, I want to do it. I want to do it. I want to do it. He went out there, and you could just see the breath coming out. Everything was just turning to ice. He uh, he did it one take, and he got nominated for an actor award for it. Isn't that so, funny? Yeah. Everybody else said, don't do it, and he said, I want to do it. And he gets nominated for it. You never know what's gonna work until you <laughs> until you've done it. Yeah, that's right. You after doing Hamlet, which we talked about, you're not doing. You're, you've become a director yet. Yeah. Good. <laughs> okay, let's play the game. Yes. No. <laughs> what is it? What are you doing? I've been uh, directing some multimedia shows and getting into the writing and uh, so forth for uh, industry and for uh, like for IBM. Did a couple of shows. Oh, nice. As nice. well as uh, directing some theater. I'm also writing a play. Uh, is that why you're beginning to dress better? Yeah. As a matter of fact, I bought this for the show. Yeah. I, uh, look, come here. Look. <laughs> Man bought himself a new is, suit. Uh, you take the labels off, John, <laughs> no, no, before no. you... Well, you usually have to look in here, but this one didn't have a label here, so I thought I'd better leave this one. <laughs> this is a uh, Marzato. Uh, oh, Marzato, yes. It's a very classy name in, uh, no. in Sarnia. No, no, that's a pasta, I believe. That's a, that <laughs> no, it's got pasta on it. <laughs> no, you see, has a water jacket, new jacket so long, it doesn't take the... You take right. the labels off, you see. Look, it has a dry cleaning instructions on it. <laughs> <laughs> Let us get off with this craziness. Let's welcome back our challenger with John Evans. This is Carl Grinfeld. Hi, Carl. Nice to see you again. See, you're going to be label showing. The stitching, but not the label. <laughs> good to have you back, Carl. And with Joe Flaherty, this is our champion. She's a good one. She's won three times, trying for a fourth win. Sue Foster. Hi, Sue. Hi. Nice to see you again. Thank you. And speaking of that fourth win, uh, Sue already, she and Joe lead one to nothing in our best two out of three match. So Carl and John, better get going with this definition. What a carriage providing dollar meals is. What a carriage providing dollar meals is i'm number 45 jim losing that carriage no no uh no it's not number 45 it is number 46 i beg your pardon we should be going to number 46 and we'll wipe number 45 off the board there and go to 46 i'll tell you about it later can we wipe that board and we'll go and we'll read number 40 number 46 david number 46 says a cow that is always sitting a cow that is always sitting. Now, I'll give you just a moment to get your head straight on this here. A cow that is always sitting. Send in my viewer, David Creamer of North Vancouver, BC. Thank you, David, for sending in a cow that is always sitting. And as you're trailing, we start with you, John, to give a letter away that you don't want. Uh, give away the uh, X. There is no X. Carl, that means you can take a letter you think might be in the solution. I'll take a C. C as in Charles, no C. 
That takes care of that idea. No letter on the board, no guests at a cow that is always sitting. We go to Joe Flaherty to give a letter away. Z. There Z. is no Z. There's no Z either. Sue, that means you can take a letter. I'll take the E, please. There are two E's. They go together in that four-letter word. One here, the second here. For two in a row in the championship, do you know a cow that is always sitting? There's a signal. Time is up. We go back to John to give one away. Uh, give away a W. There is no W. And Carl, you can take a letter. I'll take an R. An R is in Robert. There is an R. One R going in that first word here. If you need this to tie, gentlemen, do either of you know a cow that is always sitting? Back over to Joe. Give one away. Uh, wait. Q. No Q. Good choice. Sue, you can take a letter. I'll take the B, please. B as in boy. One B going at the beginning of this word. Oh. A cow that is always sitting. Back over to John. Give one away. Give away the V. No V is in Victor. Carl, take a letter. An E. I'm sorry? E. A? No A. No guess. Then David Creamer of North Vancouver, B.C. has really given the players some problems. Joe Flaherty to give one away. Those are the letters he has to choose from. What would you give away? Joe? U. He made a good choice. There's no U. Sue, you can take a letter. There should be. Oh, there is a U. I... <laughs> Beg your pardon. Oh. I don't have one, but the answer does. <laughs> Do you know a cow that is always sitting? It's not our guess, is it? Uh, oh, you gave a letter away in the yes. solution, right? I do, I do know it. Oh, these short <laughs> naps. Well, thank you. You're being very honest here, Sue. Thank you. We're, uh, that's a free guess for John. And see what I don't have them on the cards. I can't talk, friends. Carl and John, do you know a cow that is always sitting? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> well, it's still your turn, as I recall. That was a free guess. John, give a letter away. Uh, give away the Y. No Y. Take a letter, Carl. I'll take a T. A T is in Thomas. No T, no guess. Sue's honesty may be rewarded because we're back over to Sue and Joe. Joe, give a letter away. K. No K. And Sue, take a letter and may confirm your suspicions. A G. G is in George. There is a G. One G that goes at the beginning of this word for that fourth win. Do you know a cow that's always sitting? Ground beef. Ground beef, yes. Ground beef. Sitting on the ground. It's grounded always. Uh, my apologies about that for a moment there, Sue. Uh, did you, you know when the G went in? Right? When the G went in, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sue Foster is her fourth win. For Sue, we have this prize. From Howard Johnson's in Canada, you've won an enjoyable weekend for two, including breakfast and dinner at any one of our 13 Howard Johnson's locations in Ontario or New Brunswick. And we'll play the bonus for cash in a few moments. We have to say goodbye to Carl. And Carl, we thank you so much for joining us. We have thank a nice you. parting gift for you. Carl Grinfeld. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Carl. Incidentally, hey, just to clarify about that definition that we started uh, to read, the definitions come up in order. And uh, yesterday, at the end of the show, inadvertently, uh, that uh, definition was shown with one of the letters shown. And uh, on the off chance that someone may have remembered it uh, by the next day, we, I, I decided to throw it out and go to the next one. And uh, it played back and forth, so it played fairly. Sue Foster's going to try to become a five-time champion after she tries to make some money with a bonus right after this. Hello there, got to be ready at all times. We will play the bonus after we take a look at the runner-up prizes. We have the elegant Schaefer Targa Series fountain pen, pencil, and ballpoint set. Trim lines that create the finest in writing jewelry. A truly fine gift from Canada's proudest craftsman, Schaefer. Or a selection of fine quality baking products from Monarch, including Monarch Chicken Magic Sauce and Coating Mix. Makes its own sauce while it bakes. Monarch. All righty. Sue and Joe, try for the cash with this bonus definition. Putting a Band-Aid on your knee. <laughs> this was sent in by a viewer, Irene Hayden of Gorey, Ontario. Putting a Band-Aid on your knee. Right, $180 if you know it right now. Oh, I thought she was going to lean over and give me an answer there. <laughs> Here come the letters alphabetically. We take away $10 for each letter. You're on your own so you can talk out loud. For $170, here comes your first letter. Putting a Band-Aid on your knee. One fifty. Uh, the band, right? The band. band. Uh, something. Now we're band. past the A's now, band. so it can't something be band. band. Mm, no, you're band. right. Uh, yeah, putting a band aid on your knee. Yes. Uh, uh, 
Going around the bend. the bend. That's right, for $120. Yeah. yeah. You're going around the bend in the knee. <laughs> Very nicely done. Well, you can pay to go around the bend now. You got another $120 in cash. And Irene Hayden, thank you for sending that in. And good job on that. Sue Foster, you have now won four times, trying to become a five time champion. Move over with John Evans, and we'll see if she can do it. I know there's a lady coming out right now who's going to try to stop her. Hello there. Joe, say hello to a bank teller who is the mother of a little boy. That's very nice. Chris, is it Brooker? Brookser. Brookser. Hello, Chris Brookser. Nice to have you here. How old is your little boy? 16 months. 16 months? Oh, you got your hands full. And you, are you still working? Or are you... Just part time now. Part, yeah, I got kind of, kind of a little busy, yeah, it's right? It's nice to be at home. <laughs> nice to have you here with us, Chris. Hope you're going to have a good time. And obviously, you know you're up against a very yes. tough opponent here as Sue tries to become a five time champion. And we'll start the best two out of three with this definition How a certain Miss Malone liked her eggs. Remember the word certain used to refer to someone specific. How a certain specific Miss Malone liked her eggs. The champions are buzzing, but we start with the challenging team. Chris, give a letter away that you don't want. Uh, Z. There is no Z. You're off to a good start. Joe, you can take a letter. E. There is an E. There is one E in that second word going here. Do either of you know how a certain Miss Malone liked her eggs? And we go to Sue to give a letter away. She's already smiling. I'll give away the X, please. There is no X. Take a letter, John. M. M is in Mary. One M going at the beginning of this first word for the first definition of the match. How a certain Miss Malone liked her eggs? Molly Coddle. Molly Coddle. That's right. Yeah. Remember that phrase, Molly Coddle? Oh, yes. One to nothing favor the champions. Sue needs one more to become a five time champion. Chris and Joe need this to stay in the match. What a mask is worth. What a mask, M-A-S-K. What a mask is worth. Again, she's buzzing, but again, we're starting with you. You're trailing. Joe, you got a lot of pressure. Oh. She's jumping up and down, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Joe, if you'd like a little pressure, give a letter away. Oh, all right. X. There's no X. Chris, this time you'll take a letter. Uh, e. An A. Two A's, one in the four-letter word here. One of the five letter word here to tie up the match. Do you know what a mask is worth? Face value? Yes! Oh. With the pressure on, tying it up. Did you have it over here, too? <laughs> she did have it. My goodness. Well, tied at one to one, five time champion or a new champion decided with this definition a very sharp young. A very sharp young. A very sharp. Should that be young man, do you think? I think young, young man, yes, that's very fair to say that, yes. A very sharp young man. As a matter of fact, it helps a heck of a lot if we give them the whole definition, doesn't it? A very sharp young man. And as they got the last one, we are starting with you, Sue. Give a letter away. The X. There is no X. John, you can take a letter. Take a B. B as in boy. There is one B going at the beginning of this five letter word. Do either of you know for the championship a very sharp young man? A gate. Oh. No. That's incorrect. And Chris, we go to you to give a letter away. Z. Oh my. There's a Z in that solution. A big break for Sue as the Z goes here for the fifth win with a free guest. Do you know a very sharp young man? A razor blade. That's right. For win number five. Yeah. Oh. Well, I believe. I'm gonna yes, know indeed. That. I'm going to know that. Unless... A sharp, a, a young man, it refers to a, 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 a young blade, a young blade, a gay blade, which is another thing. A very sharp <laughs> young man is a razor blade. Most importantly, Sue Foster is a five-time champion. First of all, for winning that fifth, Sue gets this prize. You've won a fine timepiece from Bulova, who also make these fine watches. Renowned Accutron Quartz Accuracy. Designer style for him and her. See the new Bulova timepieces today. When time is the present, make it Bulova. As a five-game champion, you've won the Faf Tibmatic 1027. The best there is for complicated or simple sewing. Two-purpose swing-out arm, blind stitching utility combinations, automatic button-holding and monogramming. This Faf solves any sewing problem. Great job. Sue Foster? Lovely grand prize, and again, our congratulations. You know, I think one of those, it's one of those cases where you often, you give away the X, uh, or you give yes. away the Z to start with, and I think maybe if you had given away the Z instead of the X, John, they might have won the championship. Uh, it was just that, that other mm -hmm. way, that Z was such an important letter, and mm -hmm. as I say, they come up in order. It worked out very well for Sue. Our congratulations. We have to say goodbye to Chris, and Chris, uh, a, a, a tough match. I hope you'll come back and join us again sometime. Chris Brooks, thank you, Chris. Now then. Sue, 
one last bonus definition, and let's see how you do with this. Why the little boy aimed his sled at the dragon. Why the little boy aimed his sled at the dragon. They could make this for $180. He, he wanted to... He, Why the little boy aimed his sled at the dragon? He wanted to slay, he wanted to slay, slay him. It. He wanted, he wanted to slay it. He wanted, wanted to slay, slay it. it. There were no letters up there. $180. Way to go. He wanted to slay it. Sled, slay. Hey. What a nice way to finish up, Sue. Five great prizes, a grand prize, uh, $550 in cash, and we have our next tournament of champions. You will be back to compete with other great five-time champions. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. You're a fine champion, Sue Foster. Congratulations. We'll meet two new challengers right after this commercial break. Ready to go, Sue. As I have been mentioning, uh, we're delighted we have the Definition Home Game available now, and so uh, people who are kind enough to send in some of their favorite puns and definitions, uh, we say if we use one on the air, we'll send you a Definition Home Game. And make sure you send in your, your address, your return address, so we can send you the game. It's the same address to use if you come down in the studio or as a contestant. Dave Duvall will tell you what it is. That's right, Jim, and our address is Definition, Box 9, Toronto, Ontario, M4A2M9, Jim. Thank you, David. Two nice ladies have joined us with Joe Flaherty. We would like to welcome a retired elementary teacher who has traveled on all continents except Antarctica. This is Kathleen Wright. Hello, Kathleen. You have been to the Arctic, right? Oh, no, no, that, all the continents except Antarctica. Oh, except uh, yes, the Arctic isn't considered a continent. Oh, I is see. It? Oh, no, no, I guess not. No, no Antarctica. That's, that's right. right. That's that's Antarctica. Yes, I think they're just. Well, you've traveled a lot. Do you, are you going to try to make Antarctica or not? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, so they had that plane crash there. Do you remember the fr that was uh, coming back to New Zealand and didn't it crash with all people aboard? Oh, we lost down uh -huh. there a couple oh, or so uh -huh. years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's... I'm not just too sure that I want to do that. <laughs> That's very pleasant. During the show. I'm sure glad uh, it was anything else to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've done a lot of traveling. Nice to have you here with I us. I went there for a day once. <laughs> That's right. Yes, uh, I, uh, there's no Holiday Inn, is there? I can't imagine. And we would like to welcome with John Evans, the secretary who plays field hockey on the competitive level, and talking about traveling, had a six-week honeymoon trip in Africa. Blossom to Souza. Hi, Blossom. Nice to have you here. What prompted you to go to Africa? from Africa and we met here and we decided to go back to see it, the rest of our family. Well, isn't that nice? Have you been to Antarctica? No. Oh. <laughs> Did a plane crash in the way to Africa? No, never mind. All right. Oh, Blossom, yeah. nice to have you here as well. <laughs> Thank you. Now, you relax. You're among friends. You seem a little nervous. So you just hold John's hand there and we'll I'm start engaged, the... you know. I, I try. Yes. <laughs> and her husband's a big fellow, <laughs> six foot nine. <laughs> Let's okay. do it at three. He starts with this definition. Useful humor. Useful humor. Useful humor. Useful humor, I think. <laughs> and two new teams, and we will start over here with you, Kathleen, if you will, and Joe. And Joe, give a letter away that you don't want. X. There's no X. Kathleen, you can take a letter you think you might need. An E. There is an E. There is one E that goes in the five-letter word here. Do either of you know useful humor? Over to John Evans to give a letter away. I'll give away, uh, I'll give away the Z. There is no Z, and Blossom, you can take a letter. I'll it, take an A. An A. Two A's, and they go in the same word, here and here. Do either of you know useful humor? Practical jokes. That's right, practical jokes, yeah! John, did you tell Blossom that you knew it? I, I, I whispered something to her. Oh, because she suddenly was looking. I thought she had an idea, and she was looking like, which letter do, did I, do I take? It's good to confide in I your should, partner. We should talk. That's a good, good idea. She was sitting there. The poor dear was like, what can I do? He has, he has an idea, and he won't even tell me. <laughs> One to nothing. Favorite Blossom and John. Kathleen and Joe need this definition. How to cut up in a cab. Send it by a viewer with a good sense of humor, Anita Zephyr of Kitster, Ontario. Thank you, Anita, for sending in How to Cut Up in a Cab. You need this one, Kathleen? Give a letter away. Um, a K. There is, oh, there's a K in that solution. There was a K in the last one. There's a K in this one. It goes here, and it gives Blossom and John a free guess at how to cut up in a cab. Still your turn. Give a letter away this time, Blossom. Give her an X. There is no X. Take a letter, John. 
Um, a. There are, did you say A? Mm -hmm. Three A's. A? Good choice. Mm -hmm. One A going here. Second here. Here's the third. Two in a row in the championship if you know how to cut up in a cab. Back over to Kathleen to give a letter away. A Z. No Z. So this time Joe can take a letter. E. An E. No E. No letter on the board. No guess. We're back to Blossom to give one away. I'll give away a G. No G is in George. John, you can take a letter. Uh, take a U. And there's no U. And again, no guess. How to cut up in a cab. We're back to Kathleen. Give a letter away. A Q. No Q. Joe, you can take a letter. T. T is in Thomas. There is one T. It goes here in this four-letter word. Do you know to tie up the match how to cut up in a cab? And Anita Zephyr giving the players some problems from Kitchener. Blossom, give a letter away. Give away a uh, Y. No Y. Take a letter, John. Um, I take a, oh, God, uh, no. No O. No guess. Back to Kathleen. Give one away. A J. No J. Take a letter, Joe. Um, S. S is in Sam. One S, one S that goes at the beginning of this three-letter word. Do you know how to cut up in a cab? <laughs> We're back up with a blossom to give one away. Oh. I'll give away a V. No V is in Victor. Take a letter, John. Take the W. There are two W's, one here at the beginning of this word. The other completes this word. We have a new champion if you know how to cut up in a cab. With, With a, a hacksaw. hacksaw. With a hacksaw, yes, a cab is a hack. Yeah. A cab is a hack, and how to cut up in a cab with a hack saw. Blossom D'Souza, our new champion for Blossom. I hope she enjoys this prize. You've won Regal Thermic Ray Stainless Steel Cookware, the extra heavy, high quality cookware that's made right, right here in Canada. Look for Thermic Ray Stainless Steel Cookware by Regal. And again, our congratulations. And we have to say goodbye to Kathleen. Kathleen, we thank you for joining us. I hope you get to go to Antarctica and complete all the continents. Yes. And why don't you take along the definition home game with you. Thank, thank you, you for you being much. here. <laughs> Kathleen Wright. We'll be right back with Blossom, John, and Joe right after this. Well, we don't have time to play the bonus uh, now, so Blossom and John will play that first thing tomorrow. Got a couple of seconds. Not only do you do funny things on SCTV and all, but you, you are an athletic team, too. What is this? <laughs> well, we have a good softball team. I'll call it a great softball team. Oh, good. So uh, we call ourselves the uh, Mellonville Mexicans, and um, <laughs> we, um, we won our last game 22 to 21. It was a pitcher's duel. That's <laughs> just <And>, <laughs> We're willing to take anybody on. John, John sure. and his hat, the hammock pass, maybe. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Definitely. 22-21, huh? Promotional consideration by the exclusive Amana Radar Range, featuring Rotowave Cooking System, a rotating shower of power that cooks more evenly and cooks most foods faster than ever before from Amana. And the elegant Schaefer Targa Series fountain pen, pencil, and ballpoint set. Trim lines that create the finest in writing jewelry, a truly fine gift from Canada's proudest craftsman, Schaefer. And the Brother Portable Correctronic Typewriter, complete with built-in correction system, electronic features for fast, clean, professional typing. Comes complete with carrying case from Brother.